Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. Should we make a list of all the people that disappointed us since we were diagnosed with cancer or been in cancer treatment or survived cancer? Because I'm sure the list is huge. I've often told the story about several friends and family members who just couldn't cope. They couldn't do it. They just couldn't be there for me. And I could have walked with huge resentment about that. But instead, I just went, you know, that has nothing to do with me. That really has to do with their fears of cancer. Now, there is a lot of fun humor about disappointment. (laughs) And I love this cartoon. It's actually a tombstone. (laughs) And on the tombstone is written, well, this is disappointing. (laughs) Now, I didn't see that in a cemetery, but I just think that it was very, very clever use of humor to convey disappointment. (laughs) I saw another cartoon that said, the fact that head and shoulders doesn't have a body wash called knees and toes is very disappointing. (laughs) I sang that song, Head, Shoulders, Knees and Toes, so many times, not only as a mom, but as a retired teacher, that that joke really struck me as fun. There's this great quote, expectation is the root of all heartache. Do you know that? Have you experienced that where you've hoped somebody would come through for you or a job or some good news or a gift and then nope, did not happen at all. And then you had to deal with all this disappointment. Well, I've been looking at that. I actually had a therapist say this line once and I just thought it was brilliant. Every disappointment is either a longing or a hope. Do you hear that? Every disappointment is an unmet longing or hope. Once I heard that, I just realized that there were disappointments that I could control and things that I couldn't control. And once I realized that people just aren't perfect. They're not always going to come through. I could really reframe that sadness or anger or pain that happened with the expectation not being met. And once I could really see that from a different perspective, it really improved my relationships And also alleviated that kind of poor me, woe is me, or depression or sadness that descends when somebody you're counting on just doesn't come through. Now, you don't want to surround yourself with people who are just completely unreliable, but stuff just happens. And I remember being on chemo treatment and in radiation and surgeries where I really needed to rely on people. And I'm not so good at that. Like I'm usually the person that lots of people rely on. So I have high expectations of other people's behavior because I'm what they call a foxhole friend. Like if you need to be in a foxhole, I can be there with you because I got your back. And I'll bring in food and protection and blankets because I'm a Girl Scout leader. And so I am like always prepared. 
<laughs> but a lot of people just don't think like that. And you really have to understand that if you are a type A personality, that's probably why we're all going through cancer treatment and survivorship because we are those type A people. But you have to realize that not everyone thinks like us or acts like us. And so that's where I had to learn about unmet expectations and also the longing and wants that I was projecting that people would read between the lines or hear what I needed or intuit and just show up. Some people just aren't good at that. I've actually found that girlfriends are a bit better at that than my guy friends or my partner. And so in order just to not always be disappointed, I think this is a really good moment to think about the expectations that you might be putting on people around you and giving people a little bit of slack if you're like me and you did have high expectations. Sometimes, even though we're going through these treatments, sometimes we still have to manage the world around us because sometimes people aren't as good at being there in the emergency situation as we are. And that's where the communication comes in super important. And I did this episode on caregivers, the three H's. Sometimes we actually need to train. And I'm going to use that word train because sometimes we have to train people in the way that we need things done or we want things done so that they can just come up a little bit to the standards that we expect and need. And then other times we just have to be completely grateful that people are showing up for us. I know this is just like super subtle, but these are the changes and refinements that I really made during all my years of cancer treatment. I mean, when you have as much treatment as I had, three surgeries, 44 radiation treatments, two plus years of chemo, some of that chemo was three times a day. You have to rely on other people. And if we're just always disappointed in the way people are doing things or we're not grateful, nobody's going to want to help us. And also it's depressing and it's demoralizing to the people who are trying to do their best. So just wanted to call attention to this because I know that I had to reconcile it and it's actually given me a lot of opportunity just to practice gratitude. And I know that's so overused nowadays. Be grateful, be grateful. But it does help particularly when you've got to rely on people to help you get through cancer treatment. So I don't know if you remember that episode that I did called Cancer Pity Party, but boy, is that a great way to process disappointment. Just make sure that you go back and listen to that episode because it really shows you how on a daily basis you can purge things that are making you tired, angry, frustrated, disappointed, feeling ashamed. It's just a really fun episode. Also, there's an episode that I did called Washing Away Cancer. That episode is another great strategy for washing away disappointment. There are also other fun ways you can exaggerate the disappointment to the point of a comedic release. So try to imagine like a Greek chorus or an opera where you take that disappointment and you exaggerate it and vocalize it as if you're the star of your own opera. And I did an episode called um, Stress Buster Rock Opera. That 
technique is so much fun when you're under stress, but it can also be used for disappointment. There's so many episodes of Beating Cancer Daily where you can actually substitute out the emotion and actually start processing it and purge it. Sometimes it's really important to grieve a disappointment so that you don't stuff it inside and it festers. So it might really help to have a journal and you can write about it in your journal just to process some of those feelings or someone you trust, tell them about it. Just really talk about how that hurt you and how you're having a hard time just really grieving about that disappointment. It's interesting because as long as we're not holding on to it and letting it suppress our immune system, that's the key here. So you can process it comedically, you can process it with a therapist and really be able to work through what it is that's causing you either a one-time major disappointment or a series of frustrations. So if all else fails and you have to reconcile some disappointment and it's not working, and you've tried all these techniques, then just distract yourself. Go to a comedy show and just laugh for an hour and a half or turn on a comedy special and just laugh at one of your favorite comics on Netflix or on YouTube. I find that when I just have to shift my mood, just watching some comedy works every time. So a lot of comedians turn their disappointment comedy on stage. And we laugh at that because we can identify with their disappointment. But I did find a sweet quote by Martin Luther King that says, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose finite hope. And I think that's what I got really good at going through cancer was really learning how to reconcile disappointments, but also just really bolstering and being very hopeful. I think a lot of the episodes of Beating Cancer Daily not only deal with developing comic perspective, but also helping us all process disappointment and hope. So I hope you have a day with very little disappointment, and I hope that you can find the funny, even if you get disappointed. So have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. It was so great connecting with you today. If you'd like to connect more, go to comedycures.org and check out the Beating Cancer Daily membership levels. It is so fun to meet up with all of you at our many different events. We have live virtual Q&A sessions with me. We have live Comedy Cures comedy events, live health builder workshops with Jackie, Brian, Aaron, and myself, a robust monthly newsletter, plus much more. So just go to comedycures.org and look for the membership level that feels right for you. And don't forget, you can also give one as a gift to your patient if you're a doctor, to a friend, to a family member. It really makes a very unique and personal gift. That's comedycures.org and sign up today. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.